All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so here I see that this gentleman here um, has a video titled The Flat Earth Debate Nephilim Controversy or Distraction from the Gospel and the Word of God. And then I also see answers in Genesis. Does the flat, or I'm sorry, does the Bible actually describe the earth as flat? I right, so I don't know why this is um, being talked about here on the same day. I don't believe it's coordinated, <laughs> uh, but both of these channels I subscribe to, so uh, this has um, compelled me to talk about it a little bit. Okay, so this idea first of all let me say this idea that the flat earth distracts from the gospel uh, it's to me it's utterly ridiculous uh, senseless and uh, irresponsible to make that sort of claim what's a distraction from the gospel are these people that are watching the news People that are in favor of uh, the Democrats or those that are in favor of, uh, you know, Donald Trump and the Republicans. You know, this political battle that goes on in the news every single day, that's a distraction. Uh, you wonder why so many people are distracted from the Word of God? It's because of what's being played on the news and what's being played on the news is you that's the distraction it's not the truth I, I don't know how you could say the truth is a distraction what's on TV is a lie all right this idea that there's a political battle it doesn't matter there's no truth in it and you shouldn't be watching the news and you should be get caught up on politics whatsoever the left wing and the right wing of the same beast All right, that's the distraction not the truth of the word of God alright so I'm not gonna pay attention to um, yeah, this this is so ridiculous. Distraction from the gospel, like the truth doesn't matter. Come on, so we're going to criticize or be uh, critical of this video here in Genesis uh, answers in Genesis. Okay, these guys right here. All right, and so we're, I'm going to play some clips for you, and probably get five to ten minutes, and then. Uh, fast forward to a, a couple of places. So I've just quickly reviewed this, so now I'm going to talk about it. The flat earth has, believe it or not, become a, a, movement, a movement in the last few years. About 2015 it started up. and the... About 2015 it started up. So that's, to me, right, right away, that's interesting. In 2015 it started up. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh... I mean, I don't. You'd have to defend what the. You would have to define. You would have to define what the movement is. Okay, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything. I don't want I'm nothing to do with any movement. All I care about is what the Bible says. Now, what I. <laughs> would like to do is just make a point that this fellow is wrong okay so let's uh, let's go here and you'll notice that this is from 10 years ago I hear so many Christians murmuring about their 
their imperfections and their failures and their addictions and their shortcomings. And Actually, almost 11 years ago. So my point in that video was to show that there is no curvature, there is no scene curvature anywhere at all. Okay, go back. This is, I think you would have to understand. That my, so the, my point here is that 2013 it's being talked about. Okay, and not 10 years ago. Uh, we're talking 11 years ago, not not 2015, but in 2013. And to me, it's interesting because it was actually in 2012 when I began my studies. And uh, yeah, I don't feel like it was a wasted effort. All right. So in my study. I would, for example, take the word heaven. You notice here 691 mentions. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, so I, I knew and fully understood the context of the word heaven in this verse. And then go, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. All right, so I will go through every single mention of the word heaven. And I don't remember uh, exactly how long it took me. I, I, if I remember, if I rem recalling correctly, it took me a little over a day, maybe about a day, give or take. So about 12, 14 hours probably, uh, just because the way I am I'm a little bit slow and so I just want to make sure that I understand the context of every single mention of this particular word okay and so if I had any doubt you know um, let's say uh, I don't know if we can find a good example here um, if I had any doubt at all, I would open it up. I would read the chapter, and I would make sure that I understood the context of that word heaven. And then maybe I would have a further questions, fouls of the heaven. So maybe I would search that term or phrase or whatever you want to call it and and then I would go through and read all these just to make sure that I fully understood each mention of the word heaven okay now um, then I would the next thing I would do is I would take earth 936 mentions of the word earth okay and then I would go through and make sure again that I understood the context of every single mention all right and then and that took a while too a day day or so uh, you know 14 16 hours whatever it took whatever it took it, it took a while but again, I just, for me, 
I can't just go, woo, I, I got it, I get it, I see it, I saw I see, I saw okay, 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 okay. No, no, I can't do that. I gotta know. I gotta know. I ain't faking it. So another mention, another study I should say is the word moon. I want to make sure that I understand every single mention of the word moon in the context and um, you know make sure I don't miss anything yeah I can't I don't want to miss nothing all right I want to make sure I get I'm getting this right and then you know just uh, another example okay so you take like the moon and the stars and obviously there's not as many mentions but um, for me uh, it's important that I understand the context okay and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven I just want to make sure that I understand the context of every single mention and I don't want to miss nothing alright for example there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differs from another star in glory okay and then like for that one you know I would I would study I would meditate on that one all right, it's one thing to look at the words and to think you understand the context of its mention in the Bible, but then there's also the other aspect of meditating on it and, and really trying to fully understand what this verse is implying. Now, To me, it's pretty obvious. One star differs from another star in glory. To me, it's obvious. Stars are not suns. Okay, and then you know, I can get into the whole thing about how. Uh, the stars fall to the earth All right. how the stars gonna fall to the earth on the great day of the Lord when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up in the air and the wrath of God is poured upon the earth the stars of heaven fell onto the earth and I mean it's just interesting here it's just very interesting and so let's just take one star falling to the earth uh, if a star was a sun I mean, that's <laughs> it, the, the idea is ridiculous the the sun would swallow up the earth according to the you know the planet earth people all right According to them, uh, because the sun is so much bigger than the earth, according to them, uh, and I don't believe the sun is much greater than the earth. Now I can understand if you were a sun worshiper, you would want to make the sun extremely greater than the earth. I get it. I see it now. Yeah. I mean, when you consider that uh, what they present as the size of the sun, when you consider that's an arbitrary number, that they, it could be anything. All they know is the angle from 
one point to the edge of the sun and this idea of I don't know what it is how far away is it 93 million miles that, that's completely arbitrary that's completely made up it could be 107 trillion miles and then all they have to do is make it even bigger than what they say it is now uh, it's just playing with numbers They're, they could make it any size they want and all they then they would have to all they have to do is uh, say well it's this far away because it's this far away then it must be this big well they could scoot it back even further and make it even bigger so long as the angles align with their math it's completely made up the size of the Sun you have to accept that as truth All right? I mean no matter what you believe you have to accept that as truth the size of the Sun is completely 100 percent imaginary there's no way for them to conclude a particular distance and size of the Sun it's completely made up 100 percent all right so uh, anyways that the point was that I was making here is that this study was not was not a couple of hey, I didn't just click on a couple of YouTube videos oh the earth must be flat and that's fine but I put some effort into it <laughs> and then once I put the work in then I went about a plan to uh, you know present the information okay and so my plan was uh, pretty obvious to say hey look <laughs> all this evidence you're given it, it's all fake there's another way to look at these things all right there's another way to see these things and so I would present a little bit of what is being presented to us and then I would give a little bit of what the Bible says right and uh, I would do this tirelessly right and uh, it really wasn't until um, Eric Dubai came along and said hey you mind if I uh, put this stuff in a book and I said you do whatever you want just as long as you're getting the conversation going I'm happy that is all I care about <clears throat> that's all I care about I want the truth that's all I care about Again, February 25th, 2014. That's before 2015, isn't it? So this is really all I wanted to share. That 2015, I don't think you, you knew what was going on. I don't think you know what was going on, Mr. Whatever your name is.
the truth will prevail. To me, it's interesting, a little extra interesting. Okay, number one, this is before 2015. All right, so it's interesting that now the world is completely shifted. This is a real discussion on every corner in every corner of the earth. Back in 2015, 2014, I should say 2014, 2013, 2012, it was not even a discussion. I saw a real problem after I was doing my studies. And then I was going to YouTube to see who else has figured this out. Who else is talking about it? And nobody. Nobody. Well, you know, the internet's still new. I get that. The internet's still new. There was one guy that talked about the Bible and Flat Earth, and he was um, trying to make the claim that the Bible doesn't. Or no, I'm sorry. He, he, he was making the claim that the Bible is wrong because the Bible teaches a flat earth. I thought that was interesting. A, a guy that does not believe in the Word of God, does not believe in Jesus Christ, is using the Bible to say that the Bible is wrong because it teaches a flat earth. I just, to me, that was fascinating. Alright, so, that that's really all the, the only point I want to make here. Is 2015, that's just, you're just making stuff up. Okay? Now, in my little bit of uh, research way back when, it seemed pretty apparent to me that uh, the flat earth was a legitimate discussion up until 1969 and the moon landing seemed to really uh, uh, what do you call it squash or squelch or whatever the word is I'm looking for really put a damper on that conversation people are so excited about the moon landing makes it very difficult to have an open discussion when there's so much excitement generated by the supposed moon landing which if you are still claiming it's true I don't know how you have any desire for the truth at all because it's obvious they never win. Now people may wonder, well, Danny, why are you so concerned about this? Why are you talking about flat earth so much? Well, you see, our critics for a long time have been equating belief in creation with belief that the earth is flat. For a long time. That's ignorant. For a long time. So I view the flat earth movement as a personal assault, really, upon my calling and upon the... Upon your calling... What's your calling? Is, does it have anything to do with the truth? Or does it have to do with the money that you're making from being employed by answers in Genesis? Because make no mistake about it, those guys are making a lot of money. Alright, consider this. I'm getting a little bit I'm getting a little bit cocky here, okay? When I started my calling, <laughs> okay, when I started my calling, you know how much money I was making? Uh, zero. That's it, zero. You know how much money I've been making ever since? Zero. 
Uh, never ask anybody for money. Now I'm getting zero. All that time I spent 12, 14 hour days for a good two months just searching the Bible, studying the Bible. And nothing. Uh, poor. That's right. I'm poor. I was born poor. I was, I'll die poor. I don't have a nice shirt. I don't have a studio. I don't have a stage. All I had was, you know, in particular for a while there, for the, all I had was a broken laptop. And there was a point to where I, I couldn't even use the keyboard. Uh, that's part of the story that a lot of people don't know. All this piecing together of clips, and all the text I was using, I did it without a keyboard. Because uh, uh, I couldn't afford one. <laughs> I was poor. I still am poor, but not poor poor like I was. So all I had was a mouse, but I made it happen because I didn't care about nothing but the truth. So my calling, I put a lot of effort into it, man, and uh, I wasn't worried about losing my job, losing money, losing my house, losing my wife wasn't worried about none of it. All I cared about was the truth. That was my calling. So when you talk about your calling, what's your calling? <laughs> now what they what these guys do is amazing. But what is your focus really is it short-term glory is it money whatever it is just be honest about it on the ministry of answers in genesis uh, didn't we answer this question settle this question five centuries ago i mean after all didn't christopher columbus prove that the earth is a globe well actually well, actually, yeah, that doesn't make any sense, so let's change history. So when I was in the fourth grade, I remember distinctly. I missed the first day of school because I had so much fun in the summer. I did not want to go back to school. And so the first day of school, I asked Mom if I could stay home. She let me. Greatest mom ever. So I go the second day. And the second day at the very beginning after we said our Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America, whatever that nonsense was, that brainwashing that goes on with little children, whatever that was. After that, the very first thing that the teacher asks us is, what is the shape of the earth? And I looked there, I thought, ah, you know, I'm older now, I'm smarter now, and... I'm ready to go, all right? I'm ready to attack this. Every day, as a 9, 10-year-old, I was just full of energy, ready to go. Go to school, why not? Let's let's uh, let's uh, have that same sort of energy. And the very first thing she asked, oh, let's shape the earth. I look around, nobody's answering. So I raised up my hand, and she points to me and says, Jimmy, and I say, it's uh, rocky, it's bumpy. And all the kids laughed at me. I, I didn't understand. I, outside all the time since I was a little boy. Outside all the time. Dad made me be outside all the time. I was outside all the time. I, I've walked for miles. I've been, you know, outdoors, everywhere. It's, it's bumpy. It's rocky. I know. I see it. Well, no. No, they all laughed at me. 
They all thought I was stupid. Thought I was a joke. Thought I was a big time dummy. I felt like a big time dummy. And the teacher corrected me. And explained to me that no. Christopher Columbus proved. That the earth is not flat. Well, <clears throat> that was the story being told in 1980. That was what they taught. That Christopher Columbus proved that the earth is not flat. And he proved these people to be dumb. See, now we're much smarter than what we used to be. Now, those guys back 500 years ago were pretty pretty darn dumb. Pretty darn dumb. But then Chris, Christopher Columbus, pretty darn smart, he proved it. He got in a boat and he went somewhere and proved it. Now it's a kind of a joke. If you believe flat earth, you're kind of stupid. Right? Because it's been so, I mean, we're so much greater and smarter than what we used to be. And, uh, you know, so much more advanced and smart. People back then, dumb. People today, smart. It's interesting to me because I, I, what I'm seeing, <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot of smart people. All right, I'll give you an example here. Okay. Think about this. All right, he's going to go on and talk about some bozo, the clown from the 5th century or 5th, 6th BC or whatever. I mean, oh, there's other people. Think about this. All right, well, maybe I should just kind of fast forward here. Uh, Pythagoras. 6th century BC. Hey, oh, he proved it. Oh, we don't know how he proved it. He just proved it. Hey, well, he talked about it. Oh, he talked about it. Oh. Okay, so now I want you to consider this. People back then believed the earth is flat. Now people don't believe the earth is flat. All right. That means inherently, if that's true, that means Noah believed the earth was flat. You don't want to talk about that, do do you? You don't want to talk. You don't want to. You don't want to even refer to Adam. Must have believed the Earth was flat. Okay, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They all believed the Earth was flat. Right, Abraham. Abram, Abraham. He believed the Earth was flat. All right. Israel believed the earth was flat. Jacob, right? Moses, Moses believed the earth was flat. Aaron, right? Oh, you know what? Um, I there's a name I left out a name, didn't I? Joseph. Joseph believed the earth was flat. Alright, okay, we can go. Well, who else? Solomon. Solomon believed the earth was flat. And then come some Roman scholar, a Roman expert. Somebody with ties to the Roman Catholic Church comes along. Or this guy, I guess, Pythagoras. He was Greek. 
<laughs> all right uh, all right but it's, I I would contend in the same spirit okay so I'd have to get into a whole nother thing here if you don't know if you don't know okay if you don't know if you don't know okay just if you don't know whether it's Greek or whether it's Roman is that Pythagoras or is that supposed to be Christopher Columbus okay I guess it's supposed to be Columbus doesn't matter it doesn't change nothing whether it's is that is that an actual photo of Columbus so in order to believe what these guys are selling all right they won't mention this part they'll say oh Christopher Columbus figured out oh Pythagoras 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 figured it out whoever whatever how they figured it out well they they wrote down something on a piece of paper and there we go well you know Moses wrote down some stuff on a piece of paper too does that prove the earth is flat I'm not sure I can. Lord said write this Lord said to Moses write this so there so the Pythagoras he proved God wrong by writing down on a piece of paper his words more valuable than the Word of God I mean really if you're gonna be honest about this just come right out and say that Adam thought the earth was flat and he was wrong Noah thought the earth was flat and he was wrong and Joseph Abraham Moses and all those guys they all thought the earth was flat but they're just a bunch of big dummies now we're smart we got technology on our side well the technology that they use is what going to the moon except uh, well that that's phony technology because it never happened it's never gonna happen think about this old man you're gonna die and nobody's ever gonna go to the moon your children are gonna die and nobody's ever gonna go to the moon nobody's ever been to the moon in your child's lifetime in your grandchild's lifetime think about all the people that are born today in their entire lifetime if they live to be a hundred no man will ever go to the moon no man's ever been to the moon they're not going they've never went and they're never gonna go they faked it whether you want to believe it or not they faked it and of course uh, you know this is very interesting well, why would they fake it why would they fake it why would they fake it? You, you know how many times I've been asked that question how why would they fake it well men lie why why would men lie well you men lie to cover up things and then men lie also to exalt themselves don't they make themselves out to be greater than what they really are because they feel inferior so they lie don't they it's not a new idea something that's been going on for a long time now in Isaiah 14 speaking of Lucifer which is a this is a proverb I think this gets overlooked way too often this is a proverb concerning the king of Babylon all right, so there's the Babylonian Empire, there's the Medes and Persian Empire, there's the Greek Empire, and then there's the Roman Empire that we're in right now. And in this proverb concerning the king of Babylon, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, 
I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Doesn't that sound familiar to you? Doesn't that sound awfully familiar to you? I mean, what do you got to have this guy tell you what that means? Seriously. You got to have these guys tell you what that means? You can't figure it out on your own? You want me to tell you what that means? I mean, come on, man. You know what that means. You can put the pieces together. You can connect the dots on your own. You can take this and relate it to what you're seeing right now. Can't you? Because it's the same thing. It's not a new thing. It's the same thing. It's been going on for a long time. Right? Yeah, if this were true, then God would be unjust, wouldn't he? But God is not unjust. Right? So we know. I, I, I want to. I want to make a clear, bold statement here, and make the comparison with what we see here, what we read here, with what we're seeing. I'm not going to say it, because you know it. You know it already, whether I say it or not. You can see it. The same things happening today. All right, let's continue the earth was a sphere and so we have some good reasons for believing the earth is a globe how do we know that well here we have a photograph of a total lunar eclipse i took this in oh he took it that's a nice photo love it all right and then of course uh your mickey mouse here which is it's fantastic man i, I love what these guys are doing um now uh and then of course the stars um, fantastic stuff here now what they're failing okay what I should I, I gotta mention this okay what they're failing to mention is that you know, just because of what you see in the sky it is not determinative for what is on the ground alright you look up at the sky <laughs> You look up at the sky, okay? Well, that it, to say, okay, to look up into the sky and say, well, that means the ground is this way, is like looking at the ground and saying the sky is a certain way. Can you tell what the sky is by looking at the ground? If you can't tell what the sky is by looking at the ground, then you can't tell what the ground is by looking at the sky. You can imagine, and I think it's fair to to make these um, um, to present these ideas. I, I don't I don't blame these guys, but you can't draw a conclusion. It's not proof of anything. It's proof that there's a light in the sky. Beyond that, it's all speculation. There's light in the sky, there's not light in the sky. That's all you can conclude. To go further than that is speculation. Okay. All right. So, the Bedford Level uh, experiment. Now, I don't know if I could. And what I notice here is, oh, uh, he says, well, these guys, they proved it because um, they couldn't see beyond a certain point. Okay. And then, I don't know if I could find it here, um, but th I forget what it was already. All right, I forget what it was. 
something to do with oh oh I remember I remember I remember now I remember hold on a second I remember now maybe I can't find it all right so maybe I can't find it what I forget what was all right so let me just tell you what it was all right so this guy he says uh, this here the Bedford level experiment that proves that hey you can only see so far because the earth of the curve and then he goes into an explanation of what did I miss it or something did he give the explanation for the lunar eclipse first and he says well he says well uh, the reason you can see I might have to blow this up a little I can't see myself the reason you can see both the Sun and the moon is because of refraction and the earth and the light bending and all this sort of stuff okay well maybe this is where it is here they keep on going okay I might have to go might have to go I don't know anyways you all just have to take my word for it somewhere he talks about well always oh, talking about the ends of the earth and then Daniel's tree and all this sort of stuff and, well anyway so somewhere he he talks it doesn't matter it really doesn't uh, he talks about um, because the light there we go this must be it right here oh whoa, 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 don't put that up there okay there it is okay they point out to the moon you can see both the moon and the sun all right you look here to the you know west for example and then look to the east and you see both the sun and the moon okay <clears throat> well and then you see you know the lunar eclipse it's going on so there's a lunar eclipse here and then there's a the sun there all right well that's because of art of our atmospheric reflection all right our atmospheric reflection all right let's do let's talk about this 15 to 20 minutes after you've tried to make the case for the Bedford level I mean this is not honest in my opinion ignored atmospheric refraction caused by temperature inversions oh maybe he's making the case that this was not viable okay ah, I could be wrong I don't pay attention so maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong about that I, I don't care but again <clears throat> that goes to my point that no matter what you could be looking at the stars it's not gonna prove the earth you could look at the earth and it's not gonna prove the stars <laughs> I mean come on man just be honest about this it's fair to speculate I'll give you that but you can't conclude the ground by looking at the stars and you can't conclude the stars by looking at the ground vice versa okay so anyways uh, let's what what else was I gonna talk about was that enough was there something more I want to talk about uh, I, I get it you want to point to all these you know all this stuff here I get it circles of the what? circle of the earth circle of the earth the ends of the earth now you got the ends of the earth all right so you notice in all this That all these verses that he's sharing, they all support a flat earth, a circle of the earth, the ends of the earth. All right, all right. And I'll tell you the one thing. I'll tell you a little story here, and maybe I should just close it out. I think I've been long enough. But it was 2012, and I don't know what brought it on, but I, I just. 
I just woke up one day. I, I it might have had something to do with um, considering the possibility that I was wrong about 9-11. I think it was right around that time, if I'm recalling correctly. And I just thought, well, what else? If that's not true, what else are we being lied about? And so I wake up, and it's for whatever reason, there's a word ringing in my head. And so I'm making my coffee, and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get on the laptop, and I gotta look up that word. And that word was circuit. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel, Gigal, Mizpah, and judged Israel and all those places in circuit. Thick clouds are covering to him that he sees not, and he walks in the circuit of heaven. I'm not sure. Was this the word? Yeah. Yeah. And this was the verse. This was the verse that was in my head. Psalm 19, verse 6. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of of it and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof and I'm like well this is got to be talking about the Sun is there a way to prove it well it's, I think it's pretty obvious so you read the whole chapter right I mean uh, I just I gotta get particular I gotta get precise I gotta be exact I gotta know for sure that's just how I am I don't know how to be anything I don't know how anybody is any different honestly Psalm 19 the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork day unto day utter speech and night unto night showeth knowledge there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoice as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven, and a circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. For me, it's important to understand this word, simple. It simply means dummies like me. I'm as dumb as they get. But with God, with the Word of God, the Word of God makes me wise. I believe that. The Word of God can make the biggest dummies in the world wise. Not because of anything that, you know they do. You get some dummy like me that don't know nothing beyond the Bible. You know, you want, might scratch your head and wonder how I know know anything about the Bible. But the Word of God is sure. All right, it'll make you wise. It'll make the biggest dummy wise. I I think the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. That's what I think. That true wisdom. It comes from love and the Word of God. Having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and believing, simply believing the Bible that you hold in your hands. Alright, now consider this. This, there's no way around it. There's no way around it. It's talking about the sun. 
and it says it's going from one end of heaven <laughs> so therefore the heavens cannot be infinite like Albert Einstein uh, you heard me talking about dumb people earlier well that Albert Einstein probably probably as dumb as they get without the wisdom of God uh, people want to believe he's smart why well that's what people say people say he's smart well and then he must be smart well, you, is that what you believe whatever people say that's what you believe you won't believe what the Bible says but you'll believe what other people say about other people I mean come on man Come on, man. Think about it. Was there anything useful that Albert Einstein ever said that was that is useful in your life today? Nothing. And nothing at all. No, everything he said was garbage. Every single thing that he's taught and said was absolute garbage. No use whatsoever. Einstein's theory of relativity, whatever, I can't even say it relativity that's nothing that's it could be anything it's all relative <laughs> it's all relative it's all relative to what the bowl poop that you're trying to sell it's all relative relativity and it's a phrase a term that doesn't make any sense there's no logic behind it and nothing he ever taught was of any use whatsoever so you want wisdom, you want to be smart, then believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. Because the true wisdom, true smarts comes from God. You know that. It doesn't come from your heart. It doesn't come from your brain. It doesn't come from your genes. It comes from heaven above. And you know it. So, anyways, uh, the one aspect of this is the sun travels along the end of heaven and has a circuit and then of course the other aspect is nothing is hid nothing hides from the heat of the sun nothing hides from the heat of the sun so there can't be other suns and there can't be there cannot be other planets that are hid from the heat of the sun period it's talking about the sun it's not talking about the stars it's talking about the sun it's not talking about the moon it's talking about the sun there's nothing hid from the heat thereof now your argument has to be that the bible is stupid the people that wrote the bible are stupid god is stupid the bible's wrong god's wrong that's your only argument to say that the year in order to say that the earth is a ball you have to say God is stupid just be honest if that's what you believe because this is God this these are the words of God they are from God above They are from God above. And so you can't argue soundly against the Word of God. All right. So just be honest. If you believe God is stupid and you're smart, just be honest and say it. I mean, really, who are you going to fool? What are you going to gain by fooling another person? Is there anything more important than the truth? Right? And to me it's interesting. We got a really very interesting verse here. Let's see if I can find... Okay.
Romans 3, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I apologize, I, I'm sorry, okay, so Romans 3, God forbid, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. So does it matter to you that if every man on earth is wrong, does it matter? I mean, who, if there is a direct contradiction between what God says and what every man on earth says, are you still going to join the majority and stick with, well, well whatever happens um, to them, you know, what, is God going to punish them all? He might. Well, you don't care about the truth? You just want to be... Whatever happens to them, it's going to happen to me. Is that is that your um, driving force in life? Is to follow the majority? As long as you have the majority on your side, it's like when you're in grade school. As long as the big bad bully's on your side, you don't care about nothing, huh? As long as the majority's on your side, then you don't care, do you? As long as the majority has your back, you can. You can be bold and say whatever you want. The hell with the truth. Right? As long as you make that money, as long as you're making the money and you got the majority on your side, the hell with the truth. Right? Is that is that your mentality? I mean, if it is, just be honest. Be honest about it. Right? But to me, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I just want the truth. Romans 3 verse 4. God forbid, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. I know on the great day of the Lord when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven I know that my redemption is here and I know that this is gonna be shown to the whole world. The whole world's gonna say wow we are not on a ball <laughs> Well, how did we get so fooled by this, man? How are we so easily deceived by these men with all this power and fame and fortune? How did they fool us? Yeah, it's, I think it's because in a lot of ways people want to be fooled. They'd rather believe a lie than the truth. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it's it uh, it stems from the evilness in a man's heart, and that evilness um, is resentment toward God and all that is good. And so this is a way to attack God, is to by embracing things that are not true, not realizing and understanding that God's going to cut you off. All right. That's what I think. Stems from the evilness in man's heart. Of course, this world is broken. And there is no way to fix it. Though it has to be burned. All right. So consider 2 Peter 3. When it says... Here, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. So, the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. There's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So everything that we're seeing here, man, you're holding on to what? Your little spaceman theory? 
The little green man from Mars Theory. What's it's gonna crumble, man. It's not gonna play out. It's not gonna work. It's gonna come to an end. You're on the wrong side of the truth fence, buddy. Alright. The, all the evidence is there. You have no excuse. Alright. And uh uh, there's a war going on. The war is being fought every day. All right. So, in my opinion, what I will tell you is to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. All right, believe it. Believe it's from God because it is. All right. Believe it is from God because it is. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God.